everybody, it's Liz here. Um, as you can see, I'm lying down again. Um, this is like, let me take these off. This is like my second home, my bed. Um, so basically, the latest is that the NHS is yet again failing me. Um, so basically, I basically, why do I keep saying that? Um, so I got, um, down there i got a letter this morning from um my gastro doctor who the one that's really terrible um you will know about all the problems i've had with him if you watch my previous videos which i'll link in the cards above um throughout this video um so i have been waiting for three uh, yeah just over three months for my <clears throat> excuse me my mri small bowel results now this mri was actually suggested not by my gastro doctor but by one of the gastro doctors i saw when i was um in hospital f in february because the endoscopy had shown nothing the colonoscopy had shown nothing uh they planned a sigmoidoscopy i have no idea why um and that also showed not showed nothing but the MRI was because the scopes are only going inside my bowels and looking at inside the biopsies are inside. But something's clearly still not right because every single day I get diarrhea. No matter what I eat or don't eat. Like, I've stopped being able to eat breakfast because I find I have horrific diarrhea. And this morning I didn't have breakfast and still had horrific diarrhea. Um, <clears throat> I have modified my diet, I am drinking lots of water to try and be hydrated um, and basically I had a letter this morning saying that the MRI showed that I have thickening and inflammation of the sigmoid colon and but my gastro doctor has summarised the letter by saying that because my sigmoidoscopy and biopsies were clear then there's no further action needed because the MRI was just like a blip or something i find this horrific because an mri is a very detailed scan that looks really closely at all the layers from the top down whereas the sigmoidoscopy and the colonoscopy have only just been inside <clears throat> so that's basically like it just doesn't make any sense that's like having a broken leg having the x-ray is equivalent to the mri which shows that you've got a break and the sigmoidoscopy is the equivalent of somebody like pressing down going, does this hurt? Can you move your foot? You, and that's an old wives tale, like with broken bones, that if you can say you've broken your arm or your leg and they say you can move your hand or your foot, then it's not broken. That's certainly not the case. I know people who've got broken feet who've been walking on them for weeks. And <clears throat> so I just don't get the logic in that. So I feel that we are going to end up going down the road again of getting the advice from Professor Aziz in London because I can send him or I can request the MRI and the results of that and see what he says because if I basically it's so frustrating but what it means is that the MRI is showing I have colitis this has been untreated since for a whole year now um and I'm not getting anywhere. So I don't know what to do. So that is my <clears throat> nightmare. I <clears throat> have been battling with some kind of weird infection in my bladder for a few weeks. I've been on antibiotics. I've stopped. I, I didn't stop them. I finished them. Um, then it's all come back. So I'm back on different antibiotics. Um at least the urogyne doctor I see locally is actually good and he thinks that it could be because my allergies are bad at the moment. Today my eyes are very sore, you can't see but they're very, very sore and my nose has been bad um, with all the allergies around the pollen and he thinks because I've got mast cell activation disorder and obviously there's lots of mast cells in the bladder, he thinks that it's just aggravated. <clears throat> so I don't know. And then 
my headaches have been really bad and I went to see my GP today and he basically was useless saying that I've had so many tests and seen so many specialists and probably find it's nothing physical wrong and blah 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 basically I'm playing it is all in my head no pun intended um <clears throat> and it's ridiculous because I have the copy of my MRI from my brain back in May and the hospital who did it are the worst hospital they don't know what POTS is or EDS or Sjogren's they're not none of them have heard of it <clears throat> they're a very old hospital and my GP was like, well, they would have spotted it if it was Kiari and it would be on the report. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, no. So I asked to be, if they, he could contact my specialist in London and ask my neurologist to refer me to one of his colleagues in the headache clinic in Queen Square. And he refused. He said that there was no point. And basically, he's referring me to the neurology department <coughs> at Addenbrooke's which is very frustrating and won't really help and I know I'll end up back at Queen Square so I'm trying personally to actually contact Queen Square myself to see if they can um they can do something because I'm just giving up I'm not giving up I just feel like oh just just I know a lot of you watching this have been through very similar or the exact same with your doctors and I literally don't know what the suggestion is because there's so many incompetent doctors out there who either delay a diagnosis or make a misdiagnosis, which causes so many implications. And the reason it affects us and, co and it causes the NHS so much. This is why the NHS is so rubbish, because basically if they misdiagnose you, you end up having all these different tests and all these different specialists that you don't need and that you could have you know jumped ahead and got your diagnosis if they'd given the right one and like my stay in may for three days like as an inpatient and having tests mris would have cost tens of thousands of pounds i would have thought but if they'd have listened in the first place and started me on treatment for my chagrins it would have saved them all that money and the treatment for my chagrins would have cost a couple of hundred pound probably so it doesn't make any sense and and uh, I just don't get it I just I don't understand why every single way we turn has to be so hard and it's more so with people who have not rare because EDS isn't rare but chronic rare illnesses or chronic illnesses in general because you battle so hard for your diagnosis and then because you're so complex, especially something like EDS, where you get your POTS and your Chiari or Fibro or um, Sjogren's or anything like that, just like so many comorbidities of it, that doctors see that and just be like, well, you're so complex, we can't help you. Or, oh, you have so many specialists, there's no way that you could have been missed off. And like... <sighs> I literally want to scream and shout at all these people who have told me that there was nothing wrong with me when that obviously was. <clears throat> but they don't care. They don't have any implications of misdiagnosing you. They don't have to answer to anybody. Um, it's like I have this conversation every time I go to a clinic that if we're late... We get penalised, we get told, oh, you can't have your appointment, you're going to have to be re-referred. If the doctors are late, there's no no implication, we have to just sit there and take it, and that shouldn't be appropriate. Like, today, my appointment was 25 minutes late. It was like, well, <laughs> they have to have a penalty, surely. It would make the doctors hurry up, and the only exception is if there's an emergency. So... Anyway, I've rambled on long enough, but that's where I'm at. So who knows what my next post will be, but hopefully I'll have some news or some progress. I don't know. That's it from me. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe.